What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we finally have a look at every single card, which is coming around in Mass Mutation, the new Keyforge expansion. So what we're going to do today is we're going to start our series where we go through every single new card in the set. We're not going to waste a huge amount of time going over old cards because, of course, we, we know about the old cards. We've been using them for a while. What we are going to do is take a look at every single new card and we might as well start off with Sanctum because they weren't in the previous set and that seems a little bit rude so let's give them a little bit of love here remember this is not supposed to be a deep dive into every new card that would be literally impossible the point of this video is to show you the cards and give you kind of a, a brief first impression of them so let's go in set order and let's start off with Ardent Hero, a four power, zero armor creature with taunt. You cannot attack its neighbors, you have to attack it. And it cannot be dealt damage by mutant creatures or anyone with power five or higher. I.e. you've got to attack with exactly four damage in order to take it down. That one is going to stay on the field for a little while, especially if you can get some armor on there to make it impossible to one hit KO. Bulwark is a 4 power, 1 armor mutant. Sanctum don't like mutants, but they've got some. It's got Assault 2, and it gives each of its neighbors Assault 2. I.e., before you attack, you deal 2 damage. So if you're against a 2 power or less creature, you take them down before you even attack. Yay! Burning Glare is an action card with an amber bonus, and it brings a damage enhancement into your deck. There'll be one card with a damage icon on, that when you play it, you deal a damage. And when you play, you either stun an enemy creature, or each enemy mutant creature. So this is one of those Sanctum cards which is very much anti-mutant, and I'm all over this, ladies and gentlemen. It depends on how many mutants you've got and how many your opponent have got, but this one could be brutal. Commandeer is an action card with an amber bonus. And for the remainder of the turn, every time you play another card, a friendly creature captures one amber. Clearly, if you can do some kind of deck with lots of archiving, build up a big archive full of Sanctum cards and then go nuts playing like 10 in one turn, this is going to be over the top. But even if you're only capturing one or two amber, it's still a bit of amber control, so don't be too upset. Now, we probably need to pause at this stage to talk about the knights. We're going to go in order apart from this. Demo Knight. Four power, two armor, and when it is destroyed, you steal one amber. You see, a lot of the houses in this set are basically doing this. Where they have all these different knight creatures, where they are largely the same, but then they end up having an effect which kind of suits the house they're aping. So Dino Knight is clearly supposed to be Saurian, 6 power, 2 armor, and you may exalt it to deal 3 damage to a creature. Lyco Knight is clearly supposed to be the untamed one, 5 power, 2 armor with skirmish. When you start a fight, you take no damage in return. Techno Knight, which is supposed to be Logos, 5 power, 2 armor, and when you reap, you may discard a card from your hand if you do draw a card. Umbra Knight, which is clearly supposed to be Shadows. Four power, two armor with Elusive. The first time you are attacked each turn, nothing happens. Zeno Knight, clearly supposed to be Star Alliance. Five power, two armor creature. And you look at the top three cards of your deck, put one in your hand and one on the bottom of your deck. And then obviously the last one goes on top of your deck so very very much like we would usually expect for what it's worth that obviously means that demo knight is supposed to be this so yay they are all special rares incidentally so they're going to be quite hard to come across fangs of gizzleheart is an action card with an amber bonus and when you play it you purge the most powerful creature do bear in mind it says the most powerful creature not the most powerful enemy creature so that means that there will be um there will be times this really comes back to bite you be very very careful when you play this card Font of the Eye is an artifact with an Omni ability, meaning you can use it regardless of your active house. And it says that if an enemy creature was destroyed this turn, a friendly creature captures an Amber. B 
but you can use it regardless of your active house. So basically, every single turn you have, you just get to capture an amber. As long as you destroyed an enemy creature, but most of the time you won't be destroying one because they don't have one to destroy. That's not a bad thing. Yeah, there'll be the odd turns where you really can't, but try not to worry about those turns. General Salvador is a four power, two armor creature that brings two capture enhancements into your deck. By virtue of Salvador being in your deck, two other cards will have capture icons, which says that when you play that card, a friendly creature captures an amber. Assuming there is a friendly creature in play, of course. It's fine, but it's it's a kind of card that does not excite me. Two armor's fine, and the enhancements are good, but the card itself is a bit meh. Gizzleheart Zealot is a four power zero armor creature that enters play ready and enraged. Now the enraged isn't ideal because it means you've got to fight as long as there's a valid target. But then you remove the rage counter. But it enters play ready. So generally either you enter play ready or there's no one to fight. Yay I get to reap and gain an amber or you play it down and fight with it. But you still get to play it down and use it this turn so... Could be worse. Lieutenant Gorvenal. This is one of the ones we got from the Polish decks and translated properly. Boom. Four power, one armor. Yeah, Sanctum really like their armor. And after you fight with a creature, Lieutenant Gorvenal captures one amber. But the key here is it is after you fight with a creature and it is a permanent skill. So you play Lieutenant Gorvenal down. He's resting fine. But then you can attack with a bunch of other creatures and be capturing. Especially when you combine it with cards like Commandeer. There is a lot of capturing in Sanctum, which to be fair, there, there generally tends to be. Seeker of Truth is a free power one armor creature. And when you fight, you may fight with a friendly non-Sanctum creature. Now again, it is only fighting. So we're getting whiffs of Gizzleheart Zealot here. But it's still letting you fight with an extra creature. But it does say fight not ready in fight. So generally it means an out of house creature. Squire Alice, two power, two armor. And when you play, you capture two amber. It's great. Absolutely great. Yeah, fine, she'll probably be taken down moderately fast. I mean, this is very much in the realm of old Bruno or Charette. But you know what? Those cards see a lot of play. People like those cards. Capturing Amber is good. Yes, your opponent can destroy the creature and get the Amber right back. But they still don't have it next turn to try and forge. This is a good thing. Amber Heart is an artifact that lets you exalt and ward and fully heal a friendly creature. So, this is good. Exalting means you put an amber on it from the common pool. Warding means that you put a ward counter on. And the next time it would be destroyed, damaged, or removed from play, you just remove the ward counter. And fully healing is good. But then again, you've got to ward the creature, which means when your opponent KOs it, destroys it, they get the amber. You'll have to decide whether it's worth it. Angry Mob is another one we got from the Polish decks. Four power, zero armor. And before you fight, you may discard cards from the top of your deck until either you discard an Angry Mob or run out of cards. If you discard an Angry Mob, you put it into your hand. So basically, and it is before fight, so you do not have to survive the fight to get this working. Basically, if you've got multiple Angry Mob in your deck, it is going to be easier to get all of these out than it generally is trying to get lots of other creatures out. Plus, if there's none left in your deck, you can use it to reset your deck. So if there's any cards in your discard pile, you'll find them a bit faster. Baldrick the Bold, 4 power, 2 armor. And before you fight, if the creature Baldrick the Bold fights is the most powerful enemy creature, you gain 2 amber. And it's before the fight. So you don't have to survive the fight to use it. I love this. Anytime your opponent doesn't have a creature with more than two or three power, Baldric the Bold is going to be completely cleaning up. But even if you throw Baldric at a creature to be destroyed, you still get two amber. Baronon, five power, two armor. After a mutant creature enters play, you enrage Baronon. Worth pointing out, it does say mutant creature, not enemy mutant creature. So you might be enraging him yourself. 
But when you reap, you capture two amber. Now, capturing two amber is good. Enraging your opponent to make them fight and stop them reaping is not guaranteed to be good, but a lot of the time it will be. But you do run the risk of enraging your own creatures. It's not terrible. And certainly, five power, two armor is good. Capturing two amber when you reap is good. Enraging your opponent's creatures could be good, but it's not necessarily an out-and-out -out phenomenal card. Bring Low is an action card that gives you an amber bonus, and it brings a capture enhancement into your deck. And when you play, you capture all but five of your opponent's amber, distributed among any number of friendly creatures, and oh my goodness, I love it. You see, the thing is, capturing all but five of your opponent's amber leaves them with five amber. And five is not enough to forge, they need six. This is very much like Doorstep to Heaven, another phenomenal Sanctum card, that reduces each player with six or more amber down to five amber. It takes your opponent away from forging is brilliant, and because you get to move the amber anywhere you like among your creatures, it means that you can make it really difficult for your opponent to get that amber back. This is one of my favorite Sanctum cards. Gizzleheart Standard is an artifact with an amber bonus, and each friendly creature with amber on it gets plus one amber and when you play it you have to exalt a friendly creature now we do see a bit of exalting in sanctum but i've also shown you a whole bunch of cards that can capture bring low among them that we just talked about and then every time they have amber on they get plus one armor worth pointing out it says each creature with amber gets plus one amber not each creature gets plus one armor for each amber so what that means is if you've got seven amber on a creature you still only get plus one armor that is very important to point out purify is an action card with an amber bonus and when you play it you purge a mutant creature does not say friendly it might be one of your own and we see that sanctum do not like mutants even the anti-mutant cards we're seeing from sanctum here can target your own creatures if you purge a mutant creature i.e if there is one in play to purge you discard cards from the top of its controller's deck until you discard a non-mutant creature or run out of cards if you discard a non-mutant creature you put it into play under its owner's control so you can purge one of your own mutants to get a new creature which would be ironic if it was a mutant but similarly you can purge one of your opponent's creatures but if you do you have to give them a new mutant you have been warned now scrivener fabian is another one here that i think is just ridiculously good it brings two capture enhancements into the deck yes there are more capture enhancements in sanctum than other enhancements it's sanctum and when you resolve a capture bonus icon you may steal one instead so all of those capture bonus icons that we've been bringing in with all of our other cards things like general salvador as an example turn into only if you want to you do not have to steal Remember, Capture puts it on your creature and your opponent can destroy the creature and get the amber back. Steel just gives you the amber. Most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, this is going to work out very, very nicely indeed. <laughs> Book of Malefaction is an artifact that gives you an amber bonus. And after your amber is stolen, you put a warrant counter on Book of Malefaction... For each amber stolen. Yes, a new type of token. It then has an Omni ability that lets you remove a warrant counter and purge a creature. This is a phenomenal artifact. It's a kind of artifact that your opponent is going to need an answer to. And if they don't, it's going to be hilarious. They steal free amber. You purge a creature the next three turns. Now, it is only purging one creature per turn, but because it's an Omni ability, they steal free Amber, and for the next three turns, you get to purge one of their creatures. Every time. Yep. Fun times, ladies and gentlemen. Fun times. Seriously, against a stealing deck, this is going to be nuts. 
Call to Action is an action card, and when you play it, you ready each friendly knight creature. Not all of the Sanctum creatures are knights, but oh my goodness, a whole heap of them are. And they all become active. So clearly here, if this is in your hand, let's say you've got four Sanctum creatures in play and they're all knights. You use them all, and then you play this, ready them, and you get four more activations. Yes, fine, it only works if you've got lots of knight creatures. It's deck dependent, like so many Keyforge cards are. But in a deck with lots of knights, Call to Action is ridiculous and phenomenal, and I love it. Gizzleheart's Wrath, or Wrath, if you want to go all biblical with your pronunciation, is an action card that gives you an amber bonus and just destroys each mutant creature. I told you Sanctum doesn't like mutants. This is going as far as you possibly can. It literally just destroys every mutant creature. This is good. If your opponent has lots of mutants and you don't, and you're seeing all these anti-mutant cards in Sanctum, they are going to really backfire if you're playing a deck that has lots of mutants in. There's only a few mutants in Sanctum as a whole, and I'm showing you all the new cards. So you can see all the mutants available, because there were no mutants before this set. But your other houses might have lots of mutants, it could come back to bite you. When your opponent's playing lots of mutants and you're not, this is phenomenal. Lady Lorena is a 6 power free armor creature with taunt. You cannot attack her neighbors, you have to attack her. And her taunt also applies to her neighbors' neighbors. I.e., let's say you've got five creatures and Lady Lorena is creature number three. Counting one to five from either side, it doesn't matter. Now, creatures three and four will naturally be affected by the taunt, which means you cannot attack creatures three and four, you have to attack Lady Lorena. But also creatures one and two, two creatures to the left and two creatures to the right, cannot be attacked. You have to attack Lady Lorena. And then we got a six power free armor creature. Yeah. That's pretty good, ladies and gentlemen. That's pretty good. Mad Prophet Gizzleheart. I mean, you knew it was coming, right? We've, we've been multiple Gizzlehearts cards we've seen. We've seen Gizzleheart Zealot and we've seen Gizzleheart's Wrath and all of that. Fangs of Gizzleheart would be another one. So we knew there must be a Gizzleheart. This is actually the Sanctum Leader. Interesting, of course, because all the other houses got leaders in Worlds Collide. But there was no Sanctum in Worlds Collide. Poor Mars, still don't have a leader. Four power, free armor. And while Mad Prophet Gizzleheart is in the center of your battle line, it gains action. Fully heal each non-mutant creature. Gain one amber for each creature healed this way. Now again, it is each non-mutant creature, not each friendly non-mutant creature. So you are healing your opponent's creatures. But you're also gaining amber. Th this could be ridiculous. I mean, four power, three armor is big, right? But if your opponent's got five damaged creatures and you've got six, you gain 11 amber. Assuming none of them are mutants. Of course, it's got an if it's in the center of your battle line skill, it's a leader, that's what they do. This has the potential to be nuts. Master of the Grey seems like it might legitimately be broken. Four power, one armor. Your opponent cannot resolve bonus icons on cards they play. Bearing in mind, I've just shown you, remember... The, the enhancements are new here, right? So I've shown you, yeah, I've shown you all of the enhancements we can get from Sanctum cards. But all the other houses have these enhancements as well. Enhancements are one of the big things with mass mutation. And this turns all of them off, but only for your opponent, not for you. Any natural amber bonuses the cards have, gone. Any enhancements brought in by other cards in their deck, gone there are going to be several decks i am convinced a lot of decks are going to be good because of their bonus icons this turns them off and completely wrecks decks this will wreck games entire games will be wrecked because master the gray goes down and is like come at me bro and finally purifier of souls five power two armor destroyed effects 
cannot trigger. So let's say for, I mean, there, there are a couple that really springs to mind here, right? We got Dust Dimp. Dust Dimp is one of those really annoying cards because when it gets destroyed, you gain two amber. And then we've got, for instance, Brend the Fanatic. And Brend the Fanatic, when it's destroyed, you steal free amber. That's very, very good. When you play it, your opponent gains an amber. What's really cool here is that they play Bren the Fanatic, give you an amber. You play Purifier of Souls, you take out Bren the Fanatic. They don't steal free amber, and all they've done is give you an amber playing it. There's lots of good destroyed effects out there. I've only given you a couple of examples. This turns all of them off. That's really good. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Those are all the new Sanctum cards in Mass Mutation. They are back. There's some pretty nice cards coming with them, and we should all be a little bit happy. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to know what you think about these. And, of course, I would like to know which your favourite of these cards is. So tell me your favourite one in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy. That's where we talk Keyforge and a whole bunch of other games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, all kinds of fun stuff. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.